I already did the makeup look. I'm not redoing it. Uh, I do have somewhere to be at 10 o'clock. I recorded the entire segment while I was doing my makeup and my hair and my jewelry and getting dressed and all of that, only to find out I had no fucking sound on. So we're just going to re-record the, like, story portion and uh, go about our life business because, yeah. Heaven's Gate was an American new religious movement, often described as a cult, founded in 1974 and led by Bonnie Nettles and Marshall Applewhite, known within the movement as T and Doe, respectively. T and Doe first met in 1972 and went on a journey of spiritual discovery, identifying themselves as the two witnesses of Revelation, attracting a following of several hundred people in the mid-1970s. In 1976, the group stopped recruiting and instituted a monastic lifestyle. Scholars have described the theology of Heaven's Gate as a mixture of Christian millenarianism, New Age, and UFOlogy, and as such, it has been characterized as a UFO religion. The central belief of the group was that followers could transform themselves into immortal extraterrestrial beings by rejecting their human nature and they would ascend to Heaven, referred to as the next level, or the evolutionary level of Above human. The death of Nettles from cancer in 1985 challenged the group's views on ascension, where they originally believed that they would ascend to Kevin while alive aboard a UFO. They later came to believe that the body was merely a container or vehicle for the soul and that their consciousness would be transferred to new next level bodies upon death. On March 26, 1997, deputies of the San Diego County Sheriff's Department discovered the bodies of the 39 active members of the group, including that of Applewhite, in a house in the San Diego suburb of Rancho Santa Fe. They had participated in a mass suicide, a coordinated series of ritual suicides, coinciding with the closest closest approach of Comet Hailbop. Just before the mass suicide, the group's website was updated with the message, Hailbop brings closure to Heaven's Gate. Our 22 years of classroom here on planet Earth is finally coming to conclusion graduation from the human evolutionary level we are happily prepared to leave this world and go with t's crew the name heaven's gate was only used for the final few years of the group's existence and they had previously been known under the names human individual metamorphosis and total of recovery synonymous which makes it sound like a rehab of some kind the son of a Presbyterian minister and former soldier Marshall Applewhite began his foray into biblical prophecy in the early 1970s after being fired from the University of St. Thomas in Houston, Texas, over an alleged relationship with one of his male students, he met Bonnie Nettles, a 44-year-old married nurse with an interest and interest and theosophy and biblical prophecy in March 1972. The circumstances of their meeting are unclear. According to Applewhite's writings, the two met in a hospital where she worked while she was while he was visiting a sick friend there. It had been rumored that it was a psychiatric hospital, but another account had Nettles substituting for a nurse working with premature babies in the nursery. Applewhite later recalled that he felt he had known Nettles for a long time and concluded that they had met in a past life. She told him their meeting had been foretold to her by extraterrestrials, persuading him that he had a divine assignment. Oh, my nose is running in. I don't know why. Applewhite... Applewhite and Nettles pondered the life of St. Francis of Assis of Assai and read workers by read and read works by Helena Blavatsky, R. D. Lang, and Richard Bach. They kept a king's king. Why can I not speak now? The first time I did this, I did it perfectly all the way through. Now I can't talk. They kept a King James Bible and studied passages from the New Testament focusing on Christology, asceticism, and eschatology. I'm not sure I pronounced any of those correctly. Applewhite also read science fiction, including works by Robert A. Heinlein and Arthur C. Clarke. By June 19th, Applewhite and Nettles' beliefs had solidified. They concluded that they had been chosen to fulfill biblical prophecies and that they had been given higher-level minds and then other people. They wrote a pamphlet that described Jesus' reincarnation as a Texan, a veiled reference to Applewhite, of course. Furthermore, they concluded that they were the two witnesses described in the book of Revelation and occasionally visited churches or other spiritual groups to speak of their identities, often referring to themselves as the two or the UFO two. They believed they would be killed and then resurrected and, in view of others, transported onto a spaceship. This event, which they referred to as a demonstration, was to prove their claims. To their dismay, these ideas were poorly received by other religious groups. 
Hi, Mia. The two would gain their first follower, Sharon Morgan, in May 1974, abandoning her children to join them. A month later, Sharon left the two and returned to her family. Nettles and Applewhite were arrested and charged with credit card fraud for using Morgan's cards, despite the fact that she had consented to their use. The charges were later dropped. However, a routine check brought up that Applewhite had stolen a rental car from St. Louis nine months ago earlier, which he still possessed. Applewhite then spent six months in jail, primarily in Missouri, and was released in early 1975, subsequently rejoining Nettles. Eventually, Applewhite and Nettles resolved to contact extraterrestrials, and they sought like-minded followers. They published advertisements for meetings where they recruited disciples, whom they called the crew. At the events, they purported to represent beings from another planet, the next level, who saw participants for an experiment. They stated that those who agreed to take part in the experiment would be brought to a higher evolutionary level. In April 1975, during a meeting with a metaphysical group of 80 people led by Clarence Klug and Joan Culpepper's Studio City Los Angeles home, they shared their simultaneous revelations that they had been told they were the two witnesses in the Bible story of the end time. According to Benjamin Zeller, while accounts of the meeting differ, all describe it as a momentous and a, as momentous and agree that Applewhite and Nettles presented themselves as charismatic leaders with an important spiritual message. Around 25 individuals were induced to join the group. Um, after selling all worldly possessions and saying farewell to loved ones, around 20 people vanished from the public eye and joined the group. Later that year on CBS Evening News, Walter Cronkite reported on the disappearances in one of the first national reports on the developing religious group. A score of persons have disappeared. It's a mystery whether they've been taken on a so-called trip to eternity or simply been taken. In reality, Applewhite Nebels had arranged for the group to go underground. From that point, Doe and T, as the two now called themselves, led nearly 100 members across the country, sleeping in tents and sleeping bags and begging in the streets. Evading detection by the authorities and media enabled the group to focus on Doe and T's doctrine of helping members of the crew achieve a higher evolutionary level above human, which they claimed they had, they had already reached. Um, Apple White and Nettles used a variety of aliases over the years, notably Bo and Peep and Doe and T. The group also had several names prior to the adoption of the name Heaven's Gate. At the time Valley studied the group, it was known as Human Individual Metamorphosis. The group reinvented and renamed themselves several times and had a variety of recruitment methods. Apple White believed he was directly related to Jesus, meaning he was an evolutionary kingdom level above human. His writings, which combined aspects of millennialism, Gnosticism, and science fiction, suggested he believed himself to be Jesus' successor and the present representative of Christ on Earth. He was not. Doe and T taught early on that Doe's bodily vehicle was inhabited by the same alien spirit which belonged to Jesus. Likewise, T, Nettles, was presented as God the Father. And again, I say... Um, weird because like you know being a woman you would think that she would be one of like mary or something because if you go by the typical religious beliefs of the catholic and christian communities for example they um believe that mary got pregnant by god which would in a way make her a goddess because you know you can't just give birth to a baby without having sex or intercourse whatever makes you too happy I'm, I'm so annoyed with myself for screwing up the first recording. So, um, yeah, I don't know why they went with God, but that's, that's essentially what they, they, they said. So, um, the crew used numerous methods of recruitment as they toured the United States in destitution, proclaiming the gospel of higher level metamorphosis, the deceit of humans by false god spirits, envelopment with sunlight, fermentative healing, and the divinity of the UFO Two. In April 1976, the group stopped recruiting and became reclusive and instituted a rigid set of behavioral guidelines, including banning sexual activity and the use of drugs. Applewhite and Nettles also solidified their temporal and religious authority over the group. Benjamin Zeller described the movement as having transformed from a loosely organized social group to a centralized religious movement comparable to a roving monastery. Um, identifying themselves by the business name Higher Source, they used their website to pros proselytize and recruit followers beginning in the early 90s. 
Rumors began spreading among the group in the following years that the upcoming comet hale Bop housed the secret to their ultimate salvation and ascent into the kingdom of heaven. Heaven's Gate received coverage in Jacques Vallée's book, Messengers of Deception, in which Vallée described an unusual public meeting organized by the group. Vallée expressed concerns about contacting groups of the contactee groups authoritarian political and religious outlooks and heaven's gate did not escape criticism known to the media though largely ignored heaven's gate was better known in ufs ufo circles and through a series of academic studies by sociologist robert bulk in january 1994 the la weekly ran an article in the group then known as the total overcomers richard ford who would later play a key role in the 1997 group suicide discovered heaven's gate through this article and eventually joined them renaming himself rio d'angelo coast to coast am host art bell discussed the theory of the companion object in the shadow of hale bop on several programs as early as november 1996 speculation has been raised as to whether bell's programs contributed to heaven's gate group suicide which knowledge fight host dan freeson blames more on courtney brown rather than bell uh louis thurdo contacted Heaven's Gate for the BBC Two documentary series Louis Thurdeau's Weird Weekends in early March 1997. In response to his email, the row was told that Heaven's Gate could not take part in the documentary because at the present time, a project like this would be an interference with what we must focus on. In October 1996, the group rented a large home, which they called the Monastery, a 9,200 square feet mansion located near 1830... 1834 one Colina Nort later changed to Paso Victoria and Rancho Santa Fe, California. They paid $7,000 per month in cash. Yes, all of your followers are destitute and have no money, but yet you have $7,000 a month in cash. Explain that one to me. Guess it wouldn't matter because they died. But that's not the point. The same month the group purchased alien abduction insurance which yes was a valid thing back in the day and i'm not really sure if that was like part of like a life insurance policy or what that would cover up to 50 members and would pay out one million dollars per person the policy covered abduction impregnation or death by aliens i don't even know how you would prove that how would you prove to an insurance company that you were abducted impregnated or killed by aliens like how do you prove that I have so many questions. <laughs> Prior to this, in June 1995, they had purchased land near Manzano, New Mexico, and began creating a compound out of rubber tires and concrete, but left abruptly in April of 96. On the 19th to 20th of 90, 1997, of March 1997, Marshall Applewhite taped himself in Doe's final exit, speaking of mass suicide and the only way to evacuate this earth. After asserting that a spacecraft was trailing Comet hale Bop and that this event would represent the closure to Heaven's Gate, Applewhite persuaded 38 followers to prepare for ritual suicide so their souls could board the supposed craft. Applewhite believed that after their deaths, an unidentified flying object, UFO, would take their souls to another level of existence above human, which he described as being both physical and spiritual. Their preparations included each member videotaping a farewell message. Now, I'm not sure if this farewell message was just like, a, hey, I'm dying, goodbye, or like, you know, and I leave my worldly possessions, and I want to be cremated, and blah, 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 blah. I don't know. They're, <laughs> they don't really release things like that to the public, so finding any, like, further evidence of what was said or how it was treated is, like, non-existent. So I don't, I don't, genuinely, I don't know what the idea was behind it. To kill themselves, members took phenobarbital mixed with applesauce or pudding and washed it down with vodka. After ingesting the applesauce pudding mix, they secured plastic bags around their heads to induce asphyxiation. All 39 were dressed in identical black shirts and sweatpants, brand new black and white Nike Decades athletic shoes, and armband patches reading Heaven Gates Away Team. One of many instances of the group's use of the nomenclature of the fictional universe of Star Trek. So is a Star Trek cult? Huh. That would make sense. There are a bunch of Trekkies, but most Trekkies don't, you know, kill themselves. Each member carried a $5 bill and three quarters in their pockets. According to former mem members, this was standard for members leaving the home for jobs 
and a humorous way to tell us they had all left the planet permanently. The $5 bill was for covering the cost of vagrancy laws, and the quarters were for calling home for pay phones, although another former member, known as Sawyer, stated that it was a reference to a Mark Twain story which said five seventy five was the cost to ride the tail of a comet to heaven. After each one died, a living member would arrange the body by removing the plastic bag from the person's head, followed by posing the body so that it lay neatly on its own bed with faces and torsos covered by a square purple cloth for privacy. Excuse me. In an interview with Harry Robinson, the two surviving members said that the identical clothing was a uniform representing unity for the mass suicide, while the Nike decades were chosen because the group got a good deal on the shoes. Applewhite was also a fan of Nikes, and therefore everyone was expected to wear and like Nikes within the group. Heaven's Gate also had a saying, Just do it! Echoing Nike Salon. Nike Salon. Nike's slogan. I'm just horrible at pronouncing things today. The 39 adherents, 21 women, and 18 men between the ages of 26 and 72 are believed to have died in three groups over a su three successive days, with the remaining participants cleaning up after each prior group's death. The suicides occurred in groups of 15, 15, and 9 between approximately March 22nd and March 26th. Among the dead was Thomas Nichols, brother of the actress Nichelle Nichols, who was best known for her role as Yuhura in the original television series of Star Trek. Leader Applewhite was the third to last member to die. Two people remained after him and were the only ones found with bags over their heads and not having purple cloths covering their top halves. Before the last of the suicides, similar sets of packages were sent to numerous Heaven's Gate affiliated or formerly affiliated individuals. And at last, one media outlet, the BBC department responsible for Louis Thoreau's weird weekends for which Heaven's Gate had earlier declined participation. Among those in the list of recipients was Rio D'Angelo. The package D'Angelo received on the evening of March 25th, as other packages sent had, contained two VHS to videotapes, one with Doe's final exit and the other with the farewell messages of group followers. It also contained a letter stating that, among other things, we have exited our vehicles just as we entered them. D'Angelo informed his boss of the contents of the packages and then received a ride from him from Los Angeles to the Heaven's Gate home in, Rio San in Rancho Santa Fe so he could verify the letter. D'Angelo found a back door intentionally left unlocked to allow access and used a video camera to record what he found. After leaving the house, D'Angelo's boss, who had waited outside, encouraged him to make calls alerting the authorities. The San Diego County Sheriff's Department received an anonymous tip through the 911 system at 3.15 p.m. on March 26, suggesting they check on the welfare of the residents. Days after the suicide, the caller was revealed to be D'Angelo. Yes, I need to report an anonymous tip. Who do I talk to? Okay, this is regarding what? This is regarding a mass suicide, and I can give you the address. The lone deputy who first responded to the call entered the home through a side door, saw 10 bodies, and was nearly overcome by a pungent odor. The bodies were already decomposing in the hot California spring. After a cursory search by two more deputies found no one alive, they retreated until a search warrant could be procured. All 39 bodies were eventually cremated. The Evans Gate deaths were widely publicized in the media as an example of mass suicide. When the news broke of its relation to Comet Hale-Bopp, the co-discoverer of the comet, Alan Hale was drawn into the story. Hale's phone never stopped ringing the entire day. He chose not to respond until he spoke the next day at a press conference after researching the details of the incident. Speaking at the Second World Skeptics Congress in Heidelberg, Germany on July 24, 1998. <laughs> Hale said that well before Evans Gate, he had told a colleague... We are probably going to have some suicides as a result of this comet. The sad part is that I was really not surprised. Comets are lovely objects, but they don't have apocalyptic significance. We must use our minds, our reason. News of the 39 deaths in Rancho Santa Fe motivated the copycat suicide of a 58-year-old man living near Marysville, California. The man left a note dated March 27th, which said, I'm not, or I'm going on the space shop, spaceship with Hale Bop to be with those who have gone before me and imitated some of the details of the Heaven's Gate suicides as they had been reported. The man was found dead by a friend on March 31st and had no known connection with Heaven's Gate. At least three former members of Heaven's Gate died by suicide in the months following the mass suicide. On May 6, 1997, Wayne Cook and Chuck Humphrey attempted suicide in a hotel in a manner similar to that used by the group. Cook died, but Humphrey survived. Another former member, James Perky Jr., died by suicide by a self-inflicted gunshot wound on May 11th. Humphrey, who had survived his first attempt, ultimately killed himself in Arizona in February of 98. 
It seems at that point that Humphrey was just determined he didn't want to be here anymore. And as sad as that is, it does happen. It does not necessarily have anything to do with his ascension or Heaven's Gate. It just genuinely seems like maybe he was a little troubled and he just didn't want to be on this earth anymore. And that is understandable. Although most people consider the event a mass suicide, sociologist and former member of a cult, Janya Lilak has referred to the event as murder. Two former members, Mark and Sarah King of Phoenix, Arizona, operating as the TILA Foundation, are believed to maintain the group's website. As of 2017, there has been no evident growth, as after the mass suicide, the group fell into obscurity, relying mainly on their website for recruitment. And that is the sad story of Heaven's Gate and how it came to be and how it came to not be. Um, I'm very sorry that y'all didn't get to see me put on the makeup this time. Um, just malfunction with the microphone it, it it happens and unfortunately i realized it too late um next week there will definitely be the actual process of the makeup look um there will be a birthday special tomorrow because my birthday is tomorrow on the um well actually i guess technically it would be the day before this is published but um so there'll be a birthday special up on the 9th of april as well as this going up on the 10th um, thank you for hanging out with me. I'm so glad you could hang out with me. And I will see you all next Monday. Bye.